Six o'clock. Good morning, everybody. Welcome into Daybreak News. A flood watch in effect until 4 p.m. on Sunday. Flood watch in effect till 4 p.m. on Sunday. Mostly cloudy today and temperatures around 51 degrees. We'll tell you all about it coming up. This is Daybreak News. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to Daybreak News on Stream Television, Armstrong and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. I'm Mark Heim. Area rivers and creeks at risk for ice jam flooding. The recent and ongoing warm-up is melting a large portion of the region's snowpack, causing river levels to rise. The increased river levels are producing a high risk for ice jams as large sheets of ice remain on rivers and creeks in the area. Most vulnerable communities are those along rivers draining into the still frozen Lake Erie. The threat level will increase overnight into this weekend, but then some rain moves into the area leading to more ice breakup uh, and higher river levels. Ice, ice jams are very unpredictable and conditions can change rapidly. The threat for flooding will continue until either the ice is able to break up or move into the lake. Rainfall will move into the region this afternoon and tonight there will be uh, amounts of rainfall ranging from two tenths to a half of an inch. Precipitation, uh, well this rainfall and warmer temperature uh, will eliminate the snowpack completely from all but the snow belt counties. The uh, combined runoff will increase the flood threat across the area this weekend, but especially for those communities impacted by ice jams. River levels could rise very abruptly, which could lead to the development of additional ice jams. Flooding associated with ice jams is often worst immediately upstream of the jam location. If you live along uh, or near rivers prone to ice jams, be prepared to act quickly. Stay tuned to the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network, NOAA Weather Radio, weather.gov, or log on to the stream at www.streamnewsnow.com for the latest weather information and updates. Well, we are aware of a large structure fire yesterday. Shortly after 11.30 a.m., emergency radio transmissions indicate at least four fire companies responding to 2694 Ray Milton Road in French Creek Township, Venango County, listed as the McDevitt residence. It appears to be a sprawling site with uh, an industrial facility or a farm between Miller Road and Georgetown Road with many outbuildings and a lot of abandoned vehicles. The radio calls indicated the trailer on fire threatening a nearby garage. The Utica Volunteer Fire Department initially answered the call and almost immediately put out the call for mutual aid, which came from Polk, Sandy Lake, and Cochranton. Cooperstown went on standby as tankers supplied the needed water to douse the flames. There appears to be no injuries reported, and the fire was declared inactive about two hours after it started. Monday is the night that the Titusville Area School Board meets to vote on all of the measures discussed during the week's committee meeting this last week. Among many items, some already reported on this week, board members will consider authorizing the district to use the services of the Cooperative Purchasing Network, a nationwide procurement network uh, already utilized uh, by the district and uh, approved by the Commonwealth. The uh, Cooperative Purchasing Network allows more bang for the purchasing buck and meets all of the Commonwealth purchasing requirements. Board members will also consider uh, for approval execution of an information sharing only agreement with Lincoln Investments for the district's 403B program. That is a tax advantaged retirement savings plan available for public education organizations. The board will consider for approval the adoption of the Riverview Intermediate Unit 6 general operating budget in the amount of about $1.3 million for the 2015-2016 school year. Under instructional and student services, the board will consider for approval recommendations for setting course fees, purchasing textbooks, and remediation learning. The lifeguarding course fee will be set at $20 in the area of health and wellness. The science area, uh, environmental science books, classroom set of, one, of uh, 35 for just over $3,100 plus shipping and handling. Uh, this for biology keystone remediation. In world languages, level two world language books, classroom set uh, with uh, workbooks, and uh, that's for Spanish at $13,000.
Good morning. From the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network Newsroom, I'm Andy Alm. Two students at Meadville High School have been charged for a fight that sent a cop to the hospital. Police were called shortly after 10 o'clock Thursday morning. 18-year-old Ty Quill Munson, along with an unidentified juvenile student, were taken into custody. School resource officer Nick Mogul with the Meadville Police Department was injured breaking up the fight and was sent to Meadville Medical Center and released with what the department is calling a minor injury. Munson is facing charges of simple assault, resisting arrest, harassment, and disorderly conduct. He was arraigned before Judge Chisholm and placed in the Crawford County Jail on $5,000 bail. The other student will have a juvenile petition filed with numerous charges. Crawford County commissioners are set to enact a new public comment policy early next month that will change the way the public will be able to interact with the commissioners during meetings. Chairman Commissioner Francis Wiederspan tells us the board will vote on the new policy on April 2nd in an evening meeting that will be held in Titusville. The new policy would eliminate the half-hour public comment period at the end of meetings, giving speakers instead only three minutes each at the start of each regular meeting. Wiederspan says the new policy also aims to keep speakers on topic. All it does is limit what they can talk on. They can talk on anything that's on the agenda or could be expected to come before the commissioners in the future for a vote. And if they want to talk to us about other things, like we've said before, our doors are open. We're there at 8.30 to 4.30 every day. Wiederspan tells us speakers often approach the commissioners with concerns that are out of their jurisdiction. You know, we've had things brought anywhere from things to do with the school district to fluoridation of city water to, you know, who knows, you know, for things that happen in Ferguson. Yeah, those are all important issues, but it's nothing that county commissioners in Crawford County can do anything about. The Titusville meeting will be held at 7 p.m. on Thursday, April 2nd at the Town Square building. Several students in Maplewood High School are under investigation for possible sex crimes. State police tell us the students, who are 13 and 14 years old, had possessed and sent nude photos believed to be of a minor. No further information was immediately released. State police in Venango County investigated a one-car crash outside Oil City. 27-year-old Tyler M. Pettit was taken to UPMC with minor injuries after crashing into a guardrail. Police say Pettit was driving south on Route 8 near the intersection with Rind Hill Road and Corn Planter Township when he lost control of his vehicle. The accident happened on Wednesday night around 11.30. Two men were arrested at the Franklin McDonald's last evening accused of loitering and causing a disturbance. After they refused to leave, a manager called the police on 18-year-old Sean Michael Bickle of Franklin and a 16-year-old male whose name was not released. Bickle was fingerprinted and photographed at the Franklin Police Station and will be charged with defiant trespass. Police released the younger suspect to the custody of his parents. In the Shannock Township near Newcastle, a man has admitted to kicking a 102-year-old woman in the shin at his mother's nursing home and complained that she kept following them. 66-year-old Michael Pavlik pleaded guilty to harassment and was fined $150 plus court costs last week. And the Shannock Township Police say the altercation happened October 18th at the Jameson Care Nursing Home. Police say Pavlik was walking his mother down the hall and became annoyed when the 102-year-old woman began trailing them. They say Pavlik kicked the woman's shin, cutting her, then kicked her again as the nurse tried to pull him away. The American Red Cross needs blood. The agency said yesterday that the need is urgent after severe weather caused the cancellation of several blood drives in Bucks and Montgomery counties last month. Multiple drives are scheduled over the next few weeks. More information is available at redcrossblood.org or by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. State Attorney General Kathleen Kane's state budget hearing before House lawmakers this week was loaded with subtext. More from Radio PA. With State Attorney General Kathleen Kane being the focus of a grand jury, man with the Philly DA continuing a case against Democrat state lawmakers that she dropped, the budget for Kane's office was not the only thing on the minds of those in the hearing room. She had no comment on those issues, and lawmakers like Cumberland County Republican Glenn Grell only peripherally made reference to them. It's not my intention to get into the substance of any of the legal matters and investigations that are involving you, but as a member of the Appropriations Committee, can you tell us what, if any, of the funds appropriated to your office uh, have been used or will be used uh, in dealing with those investigations and uh, actions against you? This is probably the quickest answer I've had all day. None. Okay. Kane still has a date with the Senate Budget Committee on Tuesday. I'm Brad Chrisman.
Check out these stories and more at Newslive365.com, driven by North Point Automotive in Seneca. From the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network Newsroom, I'm Andy Alm. And thank you, Andy. Always good to hear you. Thank you for your report. This is Daybreak News on Stream Television, Armstrong and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. We have a break. We'll see you on the other side. Anderson Physical Therapy wants to get you back to doing the things you enjoy. Your treatment is customized to you, addressing a variety of aches and pains, including post-op, sports injuries, arthritis, headache, and fibromyalgia. Get the Anderson Advantage in six convenient locations throughout the Tri-County region. Titusville, Franklin, Seneca, Clarion, Cochranton, and Albion. Call 814-827-8148. Stay on top of your game with Anderson Physical Therapy. 814-827-8148. The Gordon B. Garrett Funeral Home has a reliable history of tradition and excellence in the community. They're trustworthy for all your needs, including pre-planning to ease your time of grief when the time comes. Garrett has served Titusville and the surrounding area for over 40 years, treating you with the utmost care, respect, and compassion. The professionals at Garrett are known for extending their kindnesses beyond the funeral. Garrett Funeral Home, now with two locations, 203 East Main and 303 North Washington Street, Titusville. Zoom from Armstrong is your best route online. Share photos, download new music, or find the next viral smash. Connect all your devices with ZoomShare. ZoomShare is fast, reliable internet throughout your home. Armstrong, one wire, infinite possibilities. It's getting closer. Get ready for an experience where expectations and reality meet. Are you looking for low-cost financial services at outstanding personal attention? Oil Country Federal Credit Union has been providing both to their members for 58 years. Oil Country Federal Credit Union truly can make a difference with a variety of financial services, including checking accounts with no minimum balance and no monthly service charge, generous overdraft privileges, visa debit, and low-interest credit cards, loans, online bill pay, and more. And now, Oil Country Federal Credit offers the convenience of mobile banking. This powerful tool allows you to access and manage your accounts anytime, anywhere. It's easy to use, it's portable, and it's free. Oil Country Federal Credit Union is committed to offering financial solutions that fit your lifestyle. Log on to oilcountryfcu.org to find out more or visit them at 1050 East Spring Street in Titusville. Your financial well-being comes first at Oil Country Federal Credit Union. Member NCUA, Equal Opportunity Lender. Big G Tire and Auto on the Hightown Road in Titusville is your home to the largest selection of tires for small compact cars to large semis. Need an oil change, inspection, or repair? Big G can service your vehicle while it's in the shop. Protect your vehicle with our fluid film undercoating to keep the rust at bay. Big G will keep you on the road. Tires for any size vehicle and auto repair. Come see us at Big G Tire and Auto on Hightown Road in Titusville. Six fourteen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Daybreak News as we take a look at that weather forecast for northwest Pennsylvania. Again, a flood watch in effect until 4 p.m. on Sunday. Well, warmer temperatures, especially today, with mostly cloudy skies. We'll see a little bit of sunshine and highs around 51 degrees. We'll take that. Saturday, some morning rain and a high of 45. Sunday, cloudy and 41. On to Monday, partly cloudy skies, 53 for a high. We cool down on Tuesday with some morning clouds and afternoon sunshine, a high of 34. Wednesday, sunshine and 41 degrees. Around the region in Meadville, it's 35. Titusville's at 32. Franklin and Oil City at 33 degrees this morning. Your weather forecast is brought to you by 408 Transmission and by the Rink Family Center. We send it back over to the news desk to Mark Heim. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Luke. Thanks so much. Friday. It's Friday, and not even the fact that it's Friday the 13th for the second month in a row is going to mess up my day. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
When the Titusville City Council meets Tuesday night, members will, among other items, consider a request from the Titusville Redevelopment Authority for $3,000 from the City of Titusville Economic Development Fund for a couple of separate projects. Making the request was James Becker, Executive Director of TRA, uh, this last Tuesday. $2,500 of the request would be a local match for a water trail feasibility study from Centerville to Oil City via Oil Creek. Becker explained $21,000 is coming from a state grant, $10,000 from Venango County, $7,500 from Crawford County, and $1,000 from TRA. He says Mackin Engineering is serving as the consultant this after several study meetings already being held. Uh, Mackin also designed Titusville's Trail Town Master Plan a couple of years ago. The water trail would go hand in hand uh, with existing bike and hiking trails. The remaining $500 request from the city by TRA would cover the cost of a membership with the Council on Greenways and Trails for the city of Titusville to be represented by the Trail Town Action Committee. Maybe you've heard of Mustard Seed Ministries. It's a group that uh, came together in Venango County over the last few years to fill a need for folks who fall through the cracks in the social safety network. It seems to work well in Venango. In fact, many of you may remember hearing about Mustard Seed Ministries on the Streams Morning Drill program a couple of years ago. A similar Mustard Seed Ministry effort in Crawford County, however, seems to be off and running at the speed of a thundering herd of turtles. According to a story posted in the Meadville Tribune this week, the uh, effort got, uh, which got underway a couple of months ago is coming to a grinding halt. Churches and other organizations were to partner with Crawford County Human Services for Fall Between the Cracks aid. As the idea progressed, Human Services dropped out due to governmental restrictions on activities with religious organizations. Josh Kidd, an AmeriCorps VISTA representative, says now the group is looking at involving civic groups while Reverend Brian Jensen at Meadville First Presbyterian says the Mustard Seed Ministry was intended as a Christian mission and not as a social or evangelization effort. He says what it is now, I'm not sure. Those of you who are uh, also in our morning drill audience may recall Christian Marr uh, making an appearance last week. Uh, he is the executive director of the Crawford Heritage Community Foundation. At that time, he talked about the importance and timing of scholarship applications. This week, in a story posted by the Meadville Tribu Tribune, Marr announces the uh, foundation recently distributing discretionary grants in the amount of almost twenty thousand dollars from five permanent endowments nineteen organizations received about nineteen thousand five hundred eighteen dollars for their projects the money came from the ben franklin trust unrestricted fund the bernadine r and john b cooley fund the fred lintner fund and the albert carlson fund According to the story, the foundation prioritizes giving to improve upon the effectiveness of existing programs and support projects incorporating preventative or preventive or curative approaches to the problems and challenges of the community. One student facing criminal charges and another facing related juvenile charges after police were called to break up a fight at Meadville Area Senior High School Thursday morning. Meadville City Police report they were dispatched early uh, at about 10 a.m. to assist an officer for a fight in progress. Uh, police say 18-year-old Tyquil Munson and, other, and another juvenile student were taken into custody. Munson will be charged with simple assault, resisting arrest, harassment, and disorderly conduct, while the uh, juvenile student will be charged with numerous items uh, by, via juvenile petition. The uh, school officer was injured during the altercation. He was transported to Meadville Medical Center, where he was released with a minor injury. It is 20 minutes after the hour of 6. This is Daybreak News on Stream Television. Armstrong and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network will be back with you in just a moment after these words. Think spring at the Cranberry Mall. On March 14th, it's the Sunburst Pageant at 4 p.m. On March 18th through the 22nd, it's the Race Car Show. Featuring local race cars, drivers, sprints, e-mods, limited stock, and more. So hurry in this spring to the Cranberry Mall. That's more like it. Cranberry Mall. That's more like it. 
It's the award season event in Truck Month here at Donovan and Bauer in Titusville, PA. Here comes Joe Vandevort in a Ram truck with 20 inch chrome, a Hemi engine, and look, it even hauls big loads. And here's Mike Harvey in a Chrysler 200 S all wheel drive. Look at all the head and leg room in the back seat of that car. The biggest stars can be found right here at Donovan and Bauer Auto Group in Titusville. Enrolling in Medicare can be an overwhelming and confusing process if you're not sure what to do. Viams Insurance Services specializes in Medicare and prescription products all year long. We make the process simple by evaluating your needs and letting you know which product will work best for you. If you're turning 65 soon or just want to find out your options, call now for an appointment. We're local people who are here for you all year long. We have offices in Meadville, Erie, and now in Titusville at 150 West Central Avenue. Call Viams Insurance Services today. Tell your life story with Pandora Jewelry from Geron Diamond Jewelers. Each charm represents a moment to remember, like a birthday, anniversary, or just a special day. Beautiful rings, earrings, and pendants complement your collection, bringing the craftsmanship, beauty, and most importantly, fun of this unique jewelry to everyone. Life has its moments. Make them unforgettable with Pandora from Geron Diamond Jewelers near the Diamond in Meadville because you do deserve the finest. Are you interested in a career that gives you choices? A career in nursing gives you options of where you can work and what you can specialize in. Travel across the globe or stay close to home. Wherever your destination, there's a need for a nurse. Visit Pitt Titusville's Discover Day on Friday, March 27th and discover how you can begin a career in nursing. Spend some time in our nursing simulation lab as Pitt Titusville nursing students practice their skills on simulation mannequins designed to portray real life patients. Tour the campus, learn about scholarship opportunities, and enjoy a complimentary lunch in our new dining facility, McKinney Commons. And talk with current Pitt Titusville nursing students and the staff. Nursing is one of the fastest growing occupations in the U.S., making up the majority of the healthcare industry. Pitt Titusville nursing graduates have achieved 100% placement over the past three years. Register for Pitt Titusville's Discover Day on March 27th by calling 814 827 4509 or visit us at upt.pit.edu. Be at Pitt Titusville and be ready. Time for your morning sports update at 623. Welcome back to Daybreak News. Well, March madness. Everybody's going crazy. Utah beating Stanford 80 to 56. It was an overtime win for Xavier, beating Butler 67-61. to That was an upset. Uh, Notre Dame beating uh, Miami 72-53. Oklahoma over Oklahoma State 64-59. to Iowa State beating Texas 69-67 and a close one there. Uh, number two ranked Georgetown uh, over Creighton 60-55. to Duke beating North Carolina State 77-53. Other winners include Kansas, Boise State, North Carolina, Arizona, Baylor. Hoops, NBA action. New York uh, dribbling past the Lakers, 101-94. Cleveland with the overtime win over San Antonio, 128-125. to That is a quick look at sports. Let's see what's on tap for today. You've got uh, East Carolina taking on uh, SMU. Uh, La- uh, LaSalle and Davidson, Michigan, Wisconsin, Florida, Kentucky, Baylor, Kansas, uh, Providence, Villanova, North Carolina, and Virginia, Indiana, and Maryland. Uh, let's see, UCLA and Arizona, Notre Dame, and Duke battling it out. Now we send it back over to the news desk to Mark Heim, who uh, has been reminding everybody that today is Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, and if you are triskaidekaphobic, this is not your day. But oh. uh, See, even I can use a 25-cent word every isn't now that, and then. Isn't that what happens when you eat turkey and you fall asleep? No, that's strychnine or something, right? I don't know. I'm just joking. I know you are. (laughs) The next story has, speaking of eating and partying, this next story has specifically to do with Clearfield County, but the message is meant for drivers really throughout northwest Pennsylvania. PennDOT District 2 reports the Clearfield County DUI strike force will conduct roving patrols this weekend as part of the St. Patrick's Day Impaired driving enforcement period. They don't have a lot of confidence in us, I don't think. 
The patrols will take place in jurisdictions throughout the county. Officers will be watching for drivers exhibiting signs of impairment by drugs and or alcohol. More information available at www.justdrivepa.com. District 2 comprises Clearfield, Center, Mifflin, Juniata, Elk, Cameron, Clinton, McKean, Potter uh, counties, all to the uh, east and northeast of the uh, area that we generally serve here. But again, the message pretty much for everyone in our audience area. Do be careful as you drive this weekend. The Cory State Police have had their hands full this week with a couple of incidents in Crawford County. Burglary theft is reported on property owned by Joshua Aulis Nanak of Girard sometime between Friday, uh, January 16th and Friday a week ago along Newton Road in Troy Township. Police say someone broke into several structures on the property uh, owned by Aulis Nanak and damaged the structures uh, and stealing some cast iron pans. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Cory State Police. And retail theft at Spanky's Tobacco World in Hydetown Monday about 9.30. Troopers report the alleged theft happened as a suspect known by police entered the store and stole merchandise. The incident remains under investigation. Authorities planned to release more information about a 30-year-old woman found shot in her Cambria County home. Cambria County Chief uh, Deputy Coroner Jeffrey Less Lees uh, says the uh, woman's body was found at about 11 a.m. Wednesday morning in Lower Yoder Township near Johnstown. The uh, coroner and uh, police were not releasing additional information beyond saying that the woman had been shot at least once. District Attorney Kelly Callahan, the coroner's office, and the West Hills Regional Police plan to release additional information at a news conference on Thursday. We've yet to hear what that will be uh, or was. It was not immediately clear whether police have charged anyone in the shooting or have any suspects. The Associated Press is also reporting the U.S. Chemical Safety Board says a 2010 explosion that killed two workers at a former Horsehead Corporation zinc oxide plant in western Pennsylvania was caused by recurring problems with a sump system that the company failed to address. Uh, the report says human factors played a role in a history of blockages and smaller explosions at the plant that caused hazardous conditions to be normalized uh, before uh, the July uh, Let's see, where did it go? <laughs> well, this is the first event of uh, Friday the 13th. Things kind of jumped around here. Anyway, uh, caused conditions to be normalized before the July 22nd, 2010 blast. Uh, the company says in objecting to the report uh, that the scientist uh, who issued it didn't visit the site or personally inspect the debris, uh, company official uh, Ali Alavi says hazardous conditions weren't the norm at the plant. Uh, workers James Taylor of Aliquippa and Corey Keller of Newell, West Virginia, died of smoke inhalation. The plant has since closed. The Main Street program in Oil City is going to be holding a social media workshop. The Oil City Main Street program holding its own Get Down to Business workshop on Monday the 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Business Innovation Center, 679 Colbert Avenue, Oil City. Uh, the featured topic will be Facebook and social media for business, presented by Holly Gibbons of Gibbons Business Solutions. Uh, the folks there say we held our first Get Down to Business workshop in October and had a great uh, turnout, good feedback from the business owners who attended one of the uh, suggested future topics with social media for business. So that's what we decided to focus on for our spring workshop, according to Bailey. She is the Main Street Manager for Oil City. We know that some of our downtown businesses are using social media very effectively to promote their businesses, but others are not. Statistics tell us 74% of online adults are using social media, and it is often influencing their purchasing decisions. A business uh, who has no online or social media presence may be missing out on potential customers. The March 23rd workshop will focus on why businesses should consider using social media as a marketing tool. Uh, they will take a closer look at Facebook for Business, and there will be an overview of other social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and others, and how to pick what might work best for your business. The cost to attend is $15 per person, $25 per couple, and the refreshments are included. Interested parties may RSVP to the Oil City Main Street office at 677-3152, extension 101. More information available by uh, emailing kbailey at oilregion.org by Friday the 20th. 
Lifelong Learning Institute classes are offered to Crawford County residents age 50 and over through a partnership between Active Aging and Allegheny College. Uh, carousel carving, among other things, and woodworking uh, will be the topic of a session at the Cambridge Springs Senior Center. Uh, that'll be on Monday the 16th from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, George uh, Nowak will discuss the art of carousel carving, and participants will do some wood carving on their own. The center is located at uh, 156 Venango Avenue in Cambridge Springs. Uh, Monday the 23rd, Rich Sayer will present a photography class at the Canadota Lake Senior Center from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, the center is located at Bloomfield Township's uh, Municipal Building. It's located at 22978 Shreve Ridge Road in Union City. Uh, Rich will teach you some tricks that he's learned in his career as a photographer to improve your skills and preserve your precious memories. On Tuesday the 24th from 3 to 5 p.m., the Meadville Senior Community Center will host a session by a special guest, Yanni uh, Kotsanis, Professor of History and Director of the Jordan Center for the Advanced Study of Russia. Uh, she'll present a program titled The Mess We're In, The Long View of Russia and the U.S. and the Ukrainian Debacle. Good morning. From the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network Newsroom, I'm Andy Alm. Two students at Meadville High School have been charged for a fight that sent a cop to the hospital. Police were called shortly after 10 o'clock Thursday morning. 18-year-old Ty Quill Munson, along with an unidentified juvenile student, were taken into custody. School resource officer Nick Mogul with the Meadville Police Department was injured breaking up the fight and was sent to Meadville Medical Center and released with what the department is calling a minor injury. Munson is facing charges of simple assault, resisting arrest, harassment, and disorderly conduct. He was arraigned before Judge Chisholm and placed in the Crawford County Jail on $5,000 bail. The other student will have a juvenile petition filed with numerous charges. Crawford County commissioners are set to enact a new public comment policy early next month that will change the way the public will be able to interact with the commissioners during meetings. Chairman Commissioner Francis Wiederspan tells us the board will vote on the new policy on April 2nd in an evening meeting that will be held in Titusville. The new policy would eliminate the half-hour public comment period at the end of meetings, giving speakers instead only three minutes each at the start of each regular meeting. Wiederspan says the new policy also aims to keep speakers on topic. All it does is limit what they can talk on. They can talk on anything that's on the agenda or could be expected to come before the commissioners in the future for a vote. And if they want to talk to us about other things, like we've said before, our doors are open. We're there at 8.30 to 4.30 every day. Wiederspan tells us speakers often approach the commissioners with concerns that are out of their jurisdiction. You know, we've had things brought anywhere from things to do with the school district to fluoridation of city water to, you know, who knows, you know, for things that happen in Ferguson. Yeah, those are all important issues, but it's nothing that county commissioners in Crawford County can do anything about. The Titusville meeting will be held at 7 p.m. on Thursday, April 2nd at the Town Square building. Several students at Maplewood High School are under investigation for possible sex crimes. State police tell us the students, who are 13 and 14 years old, had possessed and sent nude photos believed to be of a minor. No further information was immediately released. State police in Venango County investigated a one-car crash outside Oil City. 27-year-old Tyler M. Pettit was taken to UPMC with minor injuries after crashing into a guardrail. Police say Pettit was driving south on Route 8 near the intersection with Rind Hill Road and Corn Planter Township when he lost control of his vehicle. The accident happened on Wednesday night around 11.30. Two men were arrested at the Franklin McDonald's last evening accused of loitering and causing a disturbance. After they refused to leave, a manager called the police on 18-year-old Sean Michael Bickle of Franklin and a 16-year-old male whose name was not released. Bickle was fingerprinted and photographed at the Franklin Police Station and will be charged with defiant trespass. Police released the younger suspect to the custody of his parents. In the Shannock Township near Newcastle, a man has admitted to kicking a 102-year-old woman in the shin at his mother's nursing home and complained that she kept following them. 66-year-old Michael Pavlik pleaded guilty to harassment and was fined $150 plus court costs last week. And the Shannock Township Police say the altercation happened October 18th at the Jameson Care Nursing Home. Police say Pavlik was walking his mother down the hall and became annoyed 
when the 102-year-old woman began trailing them. They say Pavlik kicked the woman's shin, cutting her, then kicked her again as the nurse tried to pull him away. The American Red Cross needs blood. The agency said yesterday that the need is urgent after severe weather caused the cancellation of several blood drives in Bucks and Montgomery counties last month. Multiple drives are scheduled over the next few weeks. More information is available at redcrossblood.org or by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. State Attorney General Kathleen Kane's state budget hearing before House lawmakers this week was loaded with subtext. More from Radio PA. With State Attorney General Kathleen Kane being the focus of a grand jury, man with the Philly DA continuing a case against Democrat state lawmakers that she dropped, the budget for Kane's office was not the only thing on the minds of those in the hearing room. She had no comment on those issues, and lawmakers like Cumberland County Republican Glenn Grell only peripherally made reference to them. It's not my intention to get into the substance of any of the legal matters and investigations that are involving you, but as a member of the Appropriations Committee, can you tell us what, if any, of the funds appropriated to your office uh, have been used or will be used uh, in dealing with those investigations and uh, actions against you? This is probably the quickest answer I've had all day. None. Okay. Kane still has a date with the Senate Budget Committee on Tuesday. I'm Brad Chrisman. Check out these stories and more at Newslive365.com, driven by North Point Automotive in Seneca. From the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network Newsroom, I'm Andy Alm. Thanks, Andy, for your report. This is Daybreak News on Stream Television. Armstrong and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Area rivers and creeks are at risk for ice jam flooding. The recent and ongoing warm-up is melting a large portion of the region's snowpack, causing river levels to rise. The increased river levels are producing a high risk for ice jams as large ice sheets uh, remain on area rivers and lakes. The most vulnerable communities are those along rivers draining into the still frozen Lake Erie. The threat level will increase overnight into this weekend when some rain moves into the area, uh, leading to more ice breakup. Uh, and higher river levels. The uh, ice jams are very unpredictable and conditions uh, can change very rapidly. The uh, threat for flooding will continue until either the ice is able to break up or move into the lake. Rainfall will move into the region this afternoon and continue tonight with amounts ranging from two-tenths of an inch to uh, half an inch precipitation. Um, well, the rainfall and warmer temperatures will eliminate the snowpack completely from all but the snowbelt uh, counties, and that would be, uh, for instance, roughly Crawford County and North. Uh, this combined runoff will increase the flood threat across the area this weekend, but especially for those communities impacted by ice jams, river levels could rise very quickly and very abruptly, uh, which could lead to the development of additional ice jams. Flooding associated with ice jams is often worst immediately upstream of the ice jam location. If you live along or near rivers prone to ice jams, be prepared to act quickly. Stay tuned to Allegheny News Talk Sports Network, NOAA Weather Radio, uh, or log on to the stream at www.streamnewsnow.com. You can also go to weather.gov for all of the latest weather information and updates in the area. We are aware of a large structure fire yesterday morning shortly after 1130. Emergency radio transmissions indicated at least four fire companies responding to 2694 Ray Milton Road in French Creek Township, Venango County, listed as the McDevitt residence. It appears to be a sprawling site, uh, a farm or an industrial site between uh, Miller Road and Georgetown Road with many outbuildings and a lot of abandoned vehicles. The radio calls indicated a trailer on fire threatening a nearby garage. Utica Volunteer Fire Department initially answered the call and almost immediately put out a call for mutual aid, which came from Polk, Sandy Lake, and Cochranton. Cooperstown went on standby as tankers provided the needed water to douse the flames. There appears to have been no injuries reported uh, during this fire. Uh, the fire was declared inactive about two hours after it started. 
Monday night is the night the Titus Valeria School Board Education uh, uh, Board of Education meets to vote on all of the measures discussed during last week's committee meetings. Uh, among many items, uh, some already reported uh, on this week to you, uh, board members will consider authorizing the district to use the services of the Cooperative Purchasing Network, a nationwide procurement network having even more purchasing power than the regional resources already utilized by the district and approved by the Commonwealth. The Cooperative Purchasing Network allows more bang for the purchasing buck and meets all of the Commonwealth purchasing requirements. Board members will also consider for approval execution of an information sharing only agreement with Lincoln Investments for the district's 403B program. That's a tax advantage retirement savings plan available for public education organizations. The board will consider for approval uh, the adoption of the Riverview Intermediate Unit 6 general operating budget in the amount of about $1.3 million for the 2015-16 school year. Under instructional and student services, the board will consider for approval recommendations for setting course fees, purchasing textbooks, and remediation learning. The lifeguard uh, course uh, will be set at $20 in the area of health and wellness and science, environmental science books. Uh, classroom set 35 uh, for just over $3,100 plus shipping and handling this for biology keystone remediation. In world languages, level 2 uh, world language books classroom uh, set with workbooks, Spanish $13,000 and an annual recurring cost of $3,000. 641 is the time and this is Stream News on Daybreak Television. Armstrong and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network will be back with you in just a moment. The Bruce Shorts VFW Post 5958 in Titusville cares about the men and women who have served or who currently serve in all branches of the United States military. The truth is that care extends into the families, friends, and communities of our local heroes. By supporting the Titusville VFW, we can continue to provide care and services to those returning home or for those who fought for their country decades ago. Your support also enables us to help others in our community like the Titusville Area Food Bank, local fire departments, and many, many others. If you're a veteran, a spouse, a friend, or a member of this community, become a member of the VFW today and help us help those who fought for our freedoms. Learn more by calling 827-6223 or stop and visit us at 206 St. John Street, Titusville. We are the VFW Post 5958. The Crawford Area Transportation Authority has been serving the public transportation needs of Crawford County since 1979. CADA provides fixed route services in the cities of Meadville and Titusville and offers door-to-door -door services throughout the entire county. All of CADA's services are open to the general public. All CADA vehicles are fully ADA accessible and ready to take you where you need to go. Give us a call at 814-336-5600 or in Titusville at 775-0228. Funded in part by grants from the PA Department of Transportation and the Crawford County Commissioners. Attorney Melissa Bergman is excited to announce the opening of her practice to the Titusville community with a focus on family law, especially divorce, equitable distribution, custody and support, as well as criminal law. Hi, I'm Melissa Bergman. It is my goal and desire to make a potentially difficult time as easy as possible. Contact the law office of Melissa Bergman, 3 Orchard Lane, Titusville. Call 814-341-7716 or online at melissabergmanlaw.com. This is John Peterson from Warm Home and Hearth in Pleasantville. With 60 degree days and 40 degree nights, we all know what's coming soon. To assist you in your preparation for the cold weather, we have added several new stove lines that will give you the best selection in northwestern Pennsylvania. We now offer Harmon wood pellet and coal stoves manufactured right here in Pennsylvania. We have four models ranging from 43 to 68,000 BTU and very impressive burn displays. We also have added Yodel, America's finest cast iron wood and gas stoves. They are great heaters and add real beauty to your home. We continue to offer the full line of low pie, Avalon, and FPX wood pellet, wood and gas stoves, fireplaces, and fireplace inserts. We also offer Cozy King, Fire Chief, and Leisure Line wood coal furnaces and boilers. We feature 50 units to choose from and 21 you can watch burn. Yes, we are the store with more value and choices for you. Come to Warm Home and Hearth in Pleasantville. Pick out your stove, fireplace, or insert today. Yes, we have a fire burning just for you.
644, welcome back to Daybreak News. A flood watch in effect until 4 p.m. on Sunday. A flood watch in effect until 4 p.m. Sunday. Mostly cloudy skies today. We'll see some sunshine and temperatures around 51 degrees. Not too bad. Tonight, rain showers early on. It'll evolve into a more steady rain overnight. Lows down around 38 degrees. Saturday, some morning rain and temperatures around 45 degrees. Sunday, cloudy and 41. Monday, warming back up with partly cloudy conditions, a high of 53. Tuesday, morning clouds and afternoon sunshine, a high of 34. That's uh, St. Patrick's Day, by the way. Wednesday, sunshine and 41. Meadville's at 35. Titusville's at 30. Franklin, 32. Oil City at 34 degrees this morning. Your weather forecast brought to you by Timberlake Lodge. It's the weekend. Call out to Timberlake and their dinner specials this weekend. Also, our good friends at Pleasant Family Ski and Tubing. Mount Pleasant of Edinburgh is your family fun place to ski and tube. We send it back over to the news desk to Mark Heim. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Luke. Thank you very much. When the Titusville City Council meeting uh, takes place next Tuesday night, members will, among other things, consider a request from the Titusville Redevelopment Authority for $3,000 from the uh, City of Titusville Economic Development Fund for two separate projects. Making the request was James Becker, Executive Director of the TRA. Uh, this last Tuesday, $2,500 of the request would be a local match for a water trail feasibility study uh, stretching from Centerville to Oil City via Oil Creek. Uh, Becker explained $21,000 is coming from a state grant, $10,000 from Venango County, $7,500 from Crawford County, and $1,000 from TRA. He says Mackin Engineering is already serving as a consultant. Uh, this after several study meetings already being held. Mackin also designed uh, the Titusville Trail Town Master Plan a couple of years ago. The uh, water trail would go hand in glove with existing bike and hiking trails. The remaining $500 request from the city by TRA would cover the cost of a membership with the accounts on greenways and trails for the city of Titusville to be represented by the uh, Trail Town Action Committee. That's the recommendation. Maybe you've heard of Mustard Seed Ministries. It's a group that uh, came together in Venango County over the last few years to fill a need for folks who fall through the cracks in the social safety network. Uh, it seems uh, that uh, it works well in Venango County. In fact, you may remember hearing about Mustard Seed Ministries uh, on the Streams Morning Drill program a couple of years ago. A similar Mustard Seed Ministry effort in Crawford County, however, seems to be off and running at the speed of a thundering turtle stampede, according to a story posted by the Meadville Tribune this week. The effort, which got underway a couple of months ago, is grinding to a halt. Churches and other organizations were to partner with Crawford County Human Services for fall between the cracks kind of help. At the uh, as the idea progressed, Human Services dropped out uh, due to governmental restrictions on activities with religious organizations. Josh Kidd, who's a representative with AmeriCorps Vista, says now the group is looking at involving civic groups. While Reverend Brian Jensen at Meadville's First Presbyterian Church says the uh, Mustard Seed Ministry was intended as a Christian mission and not a social or evangelical effort. Uh, he says uh, what it is now, I'm not sure. Those of you who are also in our morning drill audience may recall Christian Marr making an appearance last week. He is the executive director of the Crawford uh, Heritage Community Foundation. At that time, he talked about the importance and timing of scholarship applications. It's scholarship season. Scholarship season. So if you have a high school student, high school senior, in any one of our four Crawford uh, county school districts and you want to apply for a scholarship uh, get your student onto our website and have them apply because the deadline is soon approaching uh, this week in a story posted by the Meadville Tribune uh, Marr announced the foundation had recently distributed discretionary grants of almost twenty thousand dollars from five permanent endowments nineteen organizations received nineteen thousand five hundred eighteen dollars uh, for their project, the money came from the Ben Franklin Trust Unrestricted Fund, the Bernadine R. and John D. Cooley Fund, the Fred Lintner Fund, and the Albert Carlson Fund. According to the story, the foundation prioritizes giving to improve upon the effectiveness of existing programs and support projects, incorporating preventive or curative approaches uh, to the problems and challenges of the community. And it is 50 minutes past the hour of 6. 
10 minutes before 7 o'clock. This is Stream News on Armstrong and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Daybreak News will continue after this. Think spring at the Cranberry Mall. On March 14th, it's the Sunburst Pageant at 4 p.m. On March 18th through the 22nd, it's the Race Car Show. Featuring local race cars, drivers, sprints, e-mods, limited stock, and more. So hurry in this spring to the Cranberry Mall. That's more like it. Cranberry Mall. That's more like it. It's the award season event in Truck Month here at Donovan and Bauer in Titusville, PA. Here comes Joe Vandervoort in a Ram truck with 20 inch chrome, a Hemi engine, and look, it even hauls big loads. And here's Mike Harvey in a Chrysler 200 S all wheel drive. Look at all the head and leg room in the back seat of that car. The biggest stars can be found right here at Donovan and Bauer Auto Group in Titusville. Tell your life story with Pandora Jewelry from Geron Diamond Jewelers. Each charm represents a moment to remember, like a birthday, anniversary, or just a special day. Beautiful rings, earrings, and pendants complement your collection, bringing the craftsmanship, beauty, and most importantly, fun of this unique jewelry to everyone. Life has its moments. Make them unforgettable with Pandora from Geron Diamond Jewelers near the Diamond in Meadville, because you do deserve the finest. Morrison Builder Supply in Titusville carries just about everything you need for your next home fix-it project or for contractors working on any size project. Whether it's electrical, lumber, plumbing, or paint, Morrison's has supplies to allow you to complete your project and get the job done. Attention outdoorsmen, Morrison's too has the best selection of guns, ammo, clothing, and other accessories in stock and take advantage of great deals on muck boots. Morrison's and Morrison's too on West Central Avenue, Titusville. Here's what people are saying about Joe Taylor Ford in Seneca. Some of my buddies that are in the uh, collector car world told me about Joe Taylor and uh, I'm telling you this, it couldn't have been a better experience. This is a big day for me to come out here and get the car. So Joe Taylor Ford didn't disappoint me, that's for sure. That's right. You won't be disappointed with a winning team at Joe Taylor Ford. Stop in today for great deals and quality Where service. You go, go see Joe, Joe Taylor Ford. Route 257 in Seneca. The mission at Love in the Name of Christ is to mobilize local churches to transform lives and communities in the name of Christ. We encourage the local Christian church to cross denominational lines and serve those in need in our community. We have an awesome opportunity here at Love Inc. to work with all the individual churches for the same Lord's call to serve and love others. Find out how Love Inc. can help your church enhance or establish an outreach program in our community. Time now for your morning sports update. 6.53 is our time. Welcome back to Daybreak News. And we'll look at uh, scores from March Madness, Utah, with the win over uh, Stanford, 80-56. to Xavier beat uh, Butler in overtime, 67-61, to an upset there. Notre Dame beat uh, Miami, 70-63. to Oklahoma over Oklahoma State, 64-49. Iowa State beating Texas, 69-67, another close uh, matchup there. Uh, let's see, NC State falling to Duke, the Duke, 77-53. to Boise State over Air Force, 80-68. Other winners included North Carolina, Kansas, Arizona, and Baylor. Pro basketball, NBA, New York dribbling past the Lakers to win 101-94. Cleveland with an overtime win over San Antonio, 128 to 125. Well, what's on tap for today? Let's uh, talk about that. East Carolina and SMU, uh, Davidson and LaSalle, Michigan, Wisconsin, Florida taking on Kentucky, Baylor and Kansas, Providence and Villanova, North Carolina, Virginia, Indiana taking on Maryland, Oklahoma and Iowa State, UCLA and Arizona, Notre Dame and Duke, Wyoming and Boise State, Tennessee and Arkansas, Utah, and Oregon. So those are just uh, 
uh, some of the matchups. Uh, Mark, I'm sure you're going to be in front of the TV all day trying to figure out which game you want to watch. <laughs> well, last night I was uh, actually in front of the radio uh, listening to the Penguins game. They uh, pulled out a win uh, over the Edmonton Oilers 5-4. to four. Uh, Sort of a, a chilling game one way or the other because they jumped out to a 4 nothing lead and almost blew it. So, But they came out on top, and I'll take it. A win is a win. A regional newspaper legend is dead. According to the ErieTVNews.com, Ed Mead, publisher and uh, publisher emeritus of the Times Publishing Company in Erie, passed away Thursday at St. Mary's at Asbury Ridge. He was 88 years old. According to the story, Mead joined the newspaper business in 1950, and became the Times publisher in 1970, and publisher emeritus 25 years later. As a publisher, he wrote his own column, 15 thousand of them to be exact, perhaps one of the last publishers in the United States to write his own column funeral arrangements are still being finalized. And some other stories that we want to bring you uh, before the end of the uh, hour here, it's uh, four minutes before the hour seven. Uh, A tractor trailer split open, hitting a barrier, spilling Twizzlers onto a Pennsylvania highway. State police say the truck crashed around 11.40 p.m. Wednesday near the Fayette City exit on Interstate 70 in Rostraver. Uh, That's Westmoreland County. Uh, Hundreds of boxes and loose packages of the strawberry and licorice-flavored twists covered the roadway. Officials say fog may have contributed to the crash. No serious injuries reported. Uh, Of course, Ross Draver, about 25 miles south of Pittsburgh. Uh, No word on the fate of uh, all of those Twizzlers. And uh, something here that you probably don't think about uh, a great deal, but uh, the Game Commission uh, swelled its ranks a little bit here. Uh, Just recently, wildlife conservation officers graduated as a part of the uh, Ross Leffler School of Conservation's 30th class. Pennsylvania has 25 new uh, wildlife conservation officers uh, following 51 weeks of intensive training. The 30th class of the Pennsylvania Game Commission's Ross Leffler School of Conservation graduated Saturday uh, during a ceremony at uh, Susquehanna Township Middle School. The uh, graduates were commissioned as officers and have been assigned to their new districts. During the ceremony, graduates were recognized for achievements in areas of academics, marksmanship, physical fitness, driving skills, and leadership. WCO graduate Jason Wagner received the class award for academics with a score of 98.6%. The class average score was 92.7. Wagner also received the Emergency Vehicle Operator Course Driving Award. WCO graduate Jared Turner was uh, honored with the Marksmanship Award, scoring 634 out of a possible 700. WCO graduate Matthew Johnson was selected as the Fitness Award winner for maintaining the highest standard of physical fitness during the 51-week training program. WCO graduate Brandon Fister was uh, chosen by his classmates to receive the Torch Award for Leadership. Members of the 30th uh, class uh, included a number of folks. One of the uh, folks that you may recognize in this area, uh, Michael Stutz Jr. of Meadville, uh, which will be serving, he'll be serving the uh, Western Erie uh, County area. Game Commission WCOs are responsible for administering a wide variety of agency uh, programs within an assigned district of about 350 square miles. Primary duties include law enforcement, responding to wildlife conflicts, uh, conservation education, administration of the Hunter Trapper Education Program. Officers are also responsible for supervising and training part time deputy wildlife conservation officers. And so, uh, something, again, you probably don't take uh, a lot of time to uh, recognize, but these are folks that are out and about every day. And again, they're a part of the um, uh, law enforcement community that many folks uh, just don't see all that often. 6.59, it's a minute before 7. Uh, We're wrapping up another week here on Stream News, uh, Daybreak News on Stream Television, Armstrong and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. We want to thank you for being with us this week, and we'll be right here again on Monday morning bringing you the news that you need to know to get your week started. Again, many thanks to the uh, ladies over at the... uh, truly unique salon on West Spring Street in Titusville. Brittany Burlingame, Brittany Miller for uh, keeping us all trimmed up uh, here at the, uh, the stream. So have a good week. We'll see you here Monday. Thanks again.